Hey boys and girls, how are you? I hope your day has been going really well so far. Now, I want to talk to you today about a story from Luke chapter 15. Who's in our story? That's a good question. We got to always ask who's in the story when we come to it. In our story, there's a dad and two sons. Do you have siblings? Do you have a dad? You can kind of understand part of what's going on in the story, can't you? Now this dad, he had a big farm with lots of land, lots of animals, lots of plants, lots of people who worked for him. And his two sons helped him run the farm. One day when the dad retired and then definitely when the dad died, the farm was going to be the property of his two sons. They would each get half of it. Now, one of the sons, the younger one, he came and he said, Dad, I want my half of the farm and I want my half of your money right now. I want my money right now. That's pretty demanding, isn't it? Guy wasn't very uh, thankful, was he? He was kind of selfish. And this man, he took all of his money that his dad gave him from the farm and he went to a different city. And he did all kinds of crazy stuff. He threw big parties and spent money on all kinds of stuff, on food and on drinks and games and all kinds of stuff. And his crazy spending, it was fun for a little bit, you know? It'd be kind of fun to spend a lot of money, I guess, right? But you know what happened? He was so irresponsible. He bought a bunch of big stuff and all of the money ran out. And all the people who hung out with him, well, they were hanging out with him because he had a bunch of money. But when he ran out of money and he couldn't let other people have fun with his money anymore, you know what happened to his friends? His friends all said, bye, dude, see ya. They didn't want to hang out with him anymore. And that guy was sad. He was sad because his friends were gone. He was sad because all of his money was gone. He ended up not having any place to live at all. And he found a guy who owned a farm. He knew what it was like to live on a farm because his dad owned a farm. And this guy had pigs. And the guy said, well, you don't have a job. You need a job. Um, how about this? How about you go and you give my pigs their food? That can be your job. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever fed a pig before, but did you know that pigs eat something called slop? Slop is really gross. It's like all of the nasty food that's left over. You know the stuff you would normally put in the garbage can or your dish disposal in the sink? Yeah, all that nasty food, they put it in a big bucket and let it sit there. And then once the bucket gets full, they take the slop, the gross leftovers that are smelly and stinky, and they give them to the pigs. So that's what happens next in this guy's life. You know, first in the story we see that this guy asked his dad for money, he got it, and he spent it all. And then what happens next? He runs out, all of his friends leave him, and he has to work for this guy feeding pigs. And like Miss Sandra has been teaching us and helping us understand, the way to know what's going on in the story in the Bible is to look at what happens first, next, and last. We've seen what happens first and what happens next. So Here's what happens. He gets out there and he, he takes this stinky gross food and he throws it out there for the pigs to eat. But you know what he does? He scratches his head. He says, well, it's kind of stinky food, isn't it? But you know what? I don't have a whole lot of food. I certainly don't have any money. I, I'm kind of hungry. And, and because I don't have any food, the, the gross leftovers that the pigs are eating, that sounds kind of good. Ew, right? Who wants to eat pig food? But the boy scratches his head and he says, you know, wait a minute, hold on. My dad has a farm too. And the people who work for my dad, they don't eat the food pigs eat. They have better food than that. I'm going to go home. Now the boy knew that when he asked his dad for all the money and then he spent it all, he was disrespectful. Have you ever been disrespectful to your parents? He knew that it was not good. He had been selfish. He'd been mean. And he knew that the consequence for his disobedience was that he ran out of all the money and that he wasn't going to get to go back. And he didn't think he was going to get to go back and, you know, get to be like in charge again. But he thought, hey, if I can just work 
for my dad and have a job like one of the people that works for my dad, then, then that'll be better than wanting pig food. Ew, gross. So what's the last thing that happens in our story? Well, the last thing is the part that's the best. The boy goes home and as he's walking home, his dad sees him from really far off. And you know what his dad does? His dad runs out there to him as fast as he can. And he is so happy. He throws his arms around his son and he gives him just a big squeezy bear hug. Have you ever gotten a big squeezy bear hug? His dad is so happy that his son has come home. And the young man, he's pretty shocked. He thought that he was going to have his dad be angry. He says, Dad, I know that when I left, I was disrespectful and I was mean. And I, I did wrong things. I disobeyed. I know that I don't deserve uh, any of your, your kindness. I just, I just know that I don't want to be giving pigs their food. And I just wanted to come home. And that dad, he gives his son that big squeezing bear hug. And instead of being mad, he says, Son, I'm so glad that you're home. The dad forgives the son. Even though the son was disrespectful, the dad forgives him. And here's what happens next. Not only does this dad forgive the son for being disrespectful and mean and selfish, you know what he does? Luke chapter 15 verse 22 says, the father told his servants, quick, bring out the best robe, the best kind of clothes and put it on my son. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. My son's wearing gross clothes. Get him the best clothes. And then bring a big fat calf and slaughter it and let's celebrate with a feast because the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to have a big celebration. That dad, when he sees his son, he forgives him for the ways that he disobeyed him. And then he says, look, Put on good clothes. Son, I'm so glad you're home. Let's have a celebration to celebrate that even though you were once gone and disobedient, now you've come home. And I forgive you, and we are good again. And we're in a good relationship again. That dad celebrated. How cool is it that the dad celebrates with his son? Now, boys and girls, that's an awesome story, isn't it? But you know what? It teaches us about what it means for you and me to be in a good relationship with God. God created us to be in a good relationship with him. And we've all sinned. We've disobeyed him. We've decided that we want to do things our way and not his, even though he made us and we should do things his way. Our sin, our disobedience, it broke our relationship with God. The consequence for that is that we're apart from his life and his goodness and we die. Not just that our heart stops beating, but forever we're separated from God's life and his goodness. And we have to be punished for that forever. But the good news is that even though you and me have disobeyed God, just like the son disobeyed his dad in our story, God has made it possible for us to be forgiven. When that boy came home and asked his dad to forgive him, his dad welcomed him home. And his dad forgave him for all of his disobedience, his meanness and his selfishness. And boys and girls, in a much better way, the same thing is true for you and me when it comes to our relationship with God. God the Father sent God the Son Jesus to this world. He lived perfectly. He didn't deserve to die the way you and I do for disobedience because he never disobeyed. But God the Son Jesus died on the cross and came back to life again so that we can be forgiven of our disobedience and have a good relationship with God if we trust in Jesus. Jesus, his life, his death, and the fact that he came back to life makes it possible for you and me to be forgiven of our disobedience and have a good relationship with God forever. We can have eternal life. Not just that our heart always keeps beating, but that we're with God in his goodness and in his life forever. Boys and girls, God 
treats us just like this dad treated the son. When we trust in Jesus, God forgives us of all of our disobedience. Jesus takes the punishment, but he also gives us his life. He takes the punishment for our disobedience and he gives us his life. And we get to have a good relationship with God again. That's what it means to be a Christian. Being a Christian is all about have you trusted in Jesus to forgive you of your disobedience. And when we trust in Jesus, we are forgiven. Just like the son got to come home and his dad gave him a big old bear hug. God welcomes us back into a good relationship with him when we have been forgiven by Jesus. Being a Christian, someone who has a good relationship with God, it's not about what facts you know or what things that you can try to do. You can't make God love you. Being forgiven of your disobedience is a free gift from God. And it's available to anyone who trusts in Jesus. Being a Christian is all about having your sin or your disobedience forgiven by Jesus. So I want to ask you, have you trusted in Jesus? If not, what are you waiting for? Talk to your parents or me. We want to help you understand more about what it means to trust in Jesus. And if you have, boys and girls, that's amazing. Remember that trusting in Jesus, we don't just do it once and then go back to, I'm going to do life my way. No, we follow Jesus every day. We listen to him every day. When we trust in Jesus, God the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us and helps us walk his way every day. Trusting in Jesus, it's not something you do just once. It's something we do for our whole life. If you have any questions about what any of that means, talk to your parents or me. We'd love to help you understand. And remember this, being a Christian, someone who has a good relationship with God, someone who's been forgiven of their disobedience and their sin, it's all about Jesus. Trusting in him. He's the one who makes it possible for us to be forgiven. Trust in him, boys and girls. Bye. I'll see you next week.